Welcome back to another episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about the best beginner snake. Is it a ball python or is it a hognose snake? Let's figure it out. Now most reptile enthusiasts will probably tell you that the best beginner snake is a ball python. And maybe that's true, but let's go through a couple key points and let's figure out what the best beginner snake might be. Perhaps the most important aspect or the most important thing you want to ask is how big of a snake do you want? If you want a larger snake, then you want something like a ball python, right? A ball python is going to get three to six feet, depending on if you get a male or a female. The females tend to get larger than the males do. If you want something smaller, then you want to go with something like a hognose snake is only going to get between a foot and a half and three feet long, whereas your ball python here, he's going to get between three and six feet. Now this is a pretty big male. He's about four and a half feet. I've had males as small as three feet and males, or females rather, as large as uh, just over six feet. So it really depends. Uh, this one I'm going to bake a tie because it depends. Do you want a big snake or do you want a little snake? The second thing you want to ask yourself is how big of an enclosure do you want to have in your house? If you want to have a ball python, well clearly you're going to get a bigger enclosure for a bigger snake. A uh, ball python enclosure, I would suggest a minimum of 40 gallons. Um, this guy here, he lives in a tub for now. Um, but once we have his full enclosure built, he's going to be living in an enclosure that's four feet long and two feet wide and two feet high. So that's basically the equivalent of a 90 gallon. And I think that's perfect. You always want something a little bit bigger than what is recommended on a snake beginner, uh, beginner kit or something like that. I'd say for a ball python, 40 gallon minimum, closer to about 60 if you want to have the most space and the best light for your ball python. A hognose snake, you want to have uh, anywhere between 20 and 30 gallons. I would steer closer to 30 gallons or even 40 for an adult. Now, of course, keep in mind, for this video, I'm going to use adult snakes for the parameters that I'm giving you. Um, a baby hognose snake, you should definitely not put in a 40 gallon tank. You're going to stress it out. It might go off food. It's just not really the best way to keep your snake. Um, so I would say if you want a smaller enclosure or what most people want is the less room taken in terms of enclosure size, I'm going to give that one the hognose snake, 30 gallons. Now the behavior of these two snakes is completely different. They're kind of the same uh, in that they're both very calm and placid. Like these aren't the ones that you have to worry about jumping out and biting you most of the time. They can both bite you, um, but these are the two that I would say are the best for beginners who are a little bit afraid or a little bit shy of the sharp end of the snake, which I do keep an eye on. No one wants to get uh, bit by a snake that's five and a half feet long. But I would say for behavior, ball pythons are more calm and placid, less moving around. This guy actually seems to be moving around quite a bit, but I do have a light on him, a couple lights on him, and he's an albino. So I'm going to try to keep this a little bit quick with our uh, the portion for the ball pythons here. Now hognose snakes are a different animal. They are diurnal snakes, so they're not nocturnal, So which means that they're going to be out in the day. So they're going to be a little bit more apt to move. They're going to move around a little bit more. They're a smaller snake, um, they eat more frequently, they got more energy to burn it seems like. Maybe that's not the scientific reason why they move around a lot more, but in my opinion they do move around a lot more. Um, still quite placid, they're not super flighty, but I would definitely give, in terms of behavior, I'd give it to the ball python. It's just easier for a beginner. Something else you want to consider when you get any animal is how long do they live? And this is a kind of a tough subject because Reptiles in captivity, although we've been keeping them for quite a while, the hobby uh, that at uh, the rate that it's growing and the size that it is now is kind of new. So take what I say with a grain of salt. Your ball python is going to live 20 years, 30 years. The record is 40 years, but I'd say between 20 and 30 years. Your hognose snake, that's completely different. We haven't been keeping hognose snakes in captivity on a large scale for very long. So really take this with a grain of salt. Um, but I would say between 10 and 20 years. That's from the mining that I've done on the internet, what I've looked at on the internet, I would say that 10 to 20 years is your best bet. So I'm gonna give this one to the ball python. 
Well, let's talk about heating and humidity. So for a guy like this, your ball python, heating is gonna be a little bit higher than your hognose snake. Basking spot for a ball python, you wanna be in the low 90s. Uh, this is a not a hard and fast rule, this is kind of a guideline. And for a hognose snake, you're gonna want it to be in the high 80s or even mid 80s, some will tell you, right? So it's a little bit of a difference. You're gonna want a few degrees separation, up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, I'd say, depending on which care sheet you choose to use as your source of information. Uh, and then for your hognose snake and your ball python's ambient temperature, a ball python ambient temperature, you want rate at around 80 or closer, maybe 84 at the highest, I'd say, for an ambient temperature. Of course, grade the enclosure so you have a hotter end and a cooler end. Um, but for a hognose snake, this is definitely not the same. You want your gradient to be somewhere in the high or mid 70s, some would say. I, I go high 70s on this. Um, of course, graded as well. You want a hotter end and a cooler end. Heat and humidity is something that you want to go after together. For a ball python, your humidity, you want somewhere to be between 50 and 60. It's pretty specific. And for a hognose snake, this is a much larger gradient, much larger um, set of information that you're going to get on the internet. I suggest that you go for a hognose snake somewhere between 30 and 60%. I go around 40%. So I'm going to give this one to the hognose snake. Lower temperatures, easier to maintain, and so is the humidity. The diet of these two animals is something that you want to really take consideration of as well. You got to feed them, um, and this is how you do it. Basically, for a ball python, you're going to want to feed it, once it's an adult, medium-sized rats. That's what I suggest for your average size ball python, where for a hognose snake, you're going to want to feed it large mice. So you really, it depends on what you want to feed, what you like to feed. Both will eat frozen thawed, um, and both will eat rodents. Your ball python is going to eat about once every week or once every 10 days, and your hognose snake is going to eat about once every week, once it's an adult. So these two are basically the same. You're going to be a little bit cheaper feeding a hognose snake, um, especially when they're babies. Hognose like to eat two or three times a week, where ball pythons will be one or two. So it really depends what you want to do at what stage of life you're getting your snake. But I would still suggest that you give this one to the hognose snake, a little bit cheaper to feed them. Cost and availability. Let's go after that one because that's important as well. This is going to be very different depending on the area that you live in. So I live in Southern Ontario, pretty close to Toronto. That's the only advice that I can give is what they cost in my area. So for example, I bought ball pythons as low as $5. I bought a regular, normal ball python for $5 one time. It was a baby. Um, someone just didn't want them. I was buying a bunch of other snakes too. But I would say if you want a normal, let's use normal as the example for both snakes, you're gonna want to spend probably about 50 bucks would be an average, 30 to 50 bucks if you want just a normal hognose snake as a juvenile or maybe even a baby, where a hognose snake, very different as well. Um, the lowest that I've ever paid for a hognose snake was $75 for a normal as a very baby. Like we're talking four grams, barely out of the egg, just a few meals in her, and you're gonna spend for an adult at least a couple hundred bucks. Now, if you wanna get into morphs, both can go for thousands of dollars. And albino, uh, let's use albino as an example because I've been showing albinos in both of these snakes throughout the entire video. So this guy right here, this is Pikachu, by the way, and this is a full-grown male ball python. And Pikachu uh, cost me 250 bucks. That's it, I got a good deal, two or $400 for him and for his mate, which is a heterozygous for albino. Hopefully we'll get some albino babies this year. So 250 bucks for an adult male albino ball python. Now for an uh, adult male or adult females, what I have, albino hognose snake I bought her as a baby very tiny baby 12 grams something like that and she cost me 350 bucks so very different pricing has changed in the last three years but your as morphs go on for lower base morphs it's gonna be more expensive for hognose and then if you want super crazy morphs ball pythons are gonna give you a run for your money literally we're talking tens of thousands of dollars or even a hundred thousand dollars plus if you want a scaleless animal here in Canada so it depends what you're after, how much money you want to spend, but I'm going to give this one to the ball python. And our very last topic is availability. This is important because if you want one of these animals, well, you got to find one or you're not going to have one. And I think for both of these animals, they're very available. Ball pythons, maybe just edge them out a bit in terms of 
how easy it is to get one. The ball python is at every table and every expo basically where a hog nose is a little bit harder to find. Even in pet shops, I would definitely say it is much easier to find a ball python no matter what you're looking for compared to a hog nose snake. Um, so I'm going to put cost and availability together and I'm still going to give it to the hog nose snake. Which means that if you were keeping score, three for the hog nose, three for the ball python, and we had one tie, which means I'm not going to tell you which one's better. That's for you to decide. If you want a larger snake, go with your uh, your ball python. If you want something a little bit smaller, you got to go with a hog nose snake. Um, just one thing to keep in mind: if a ball python bites you, it's gonna not feel great. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it is a bite from a snake. If a hog nose snake bites you, they are technically rear fang venomous, which means you might have an, a reaction to it. It depends how long they're gonna bite you and latch onto you. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But generally, they'll only bite you if you think that they think that you're food. And although I've never been bitten by a ball python before, generally they are more apt to bite you defensively um, in comparison to a hognose snake. And if you notice, I keep my eye on the sharp end because even though this is a very docile individual, you never know and no one wants to get bit by snakes. So that's it. That's the video for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think is the best beginner snake? Is it a hog nose snake? Is it a ball python snake? Is it a different snake completely? Let me know what you think. And if you enjoy this video, please like, consider hitting subscribe. Now that we're 100 subs, we're going to do a video every Monday and every Thursday, which means I'll see you on Thursday.